instructed to have elders, deacons, members, with only one head, and that's Christ. And there's a reason why they were implemented. Those elders were implemented. And it's to make decisions, to make decisions that are sound, that will protect the body of Christ. And I'm sure each one of our elders here will attest to the fact that sometimes they have to make decisions that they don't want to make. They don't like making. By the same token, there's probably, not that I've known of it, not that many, many of us would ever know of it, but there might have been times where they've disagreed, all three of them. But they have a duty to work together to compromise to evaluate not their own self agenda, but what's best for the body of Christ. I have one hand here, then I go back to Fred, and then I'll come over here. It, you know, by by when we look at the eldership, you know, in ideally they there shouldn't be one who's dominant or who is the head of an eldership because we find no place in the Bible that speaks of one elder having more authority or a higher position than the other. But generally what you'll find is one individual who uh, tends to give the announcements, like if a decision's been made, uh, one elder will give a decision basically saying that this is the work or this is the decision from or the eldership. Uh, a lot of times it has to do with um, availability. Uh, I was talking with an elder recently and, and this elder said that you know a lot of times people think that I have more pull or more say in what happens. But the bottom line is the fact the issue is that I'm more available than the other two schedule allows. And so when a decision is brought up, generally I'm the first one that hears. And so if I'm the one that the ad is being addressed with the issue, then I bring it forward to the other elders and we discuss it. That doesn't mean that one elder has more authority or more power or more say so than any others. Fred? And you know, Fred, you know, sometimes, sometimes we forget, I say we as Christians, we forget the importance of their, their work. And we fail to recognize the position that they are in. And sometimes when decisions are made that we don't like, we get upset because it's not what I wanted. Uh, let's go to Faith and we'll come over here to Chuck. Well, you have to remember back to what, what the Bible says. When two or more are gathered, I'm there in your midst. And so uh, I'm going to share a story that Bobby Simpson told me. And just, man, it just blew my mind away. When he was in the service, there were only two, or it was, it was only two people who were members of the church. It was him, and I believe he said it was his sergeant, his, his CO. And every Sunday, the two of them walked off into the woods while they were in Vietnam and worshiped God. Now, you want me to tell you about dedication? Man, I just get chills thinking about that. And so, you know, where, where you, if you don't have qualified men, you know, that doesn't excuse us from worshiping God. Ideally, we want to preach the gospel, teach the gospel enough so that we can have qualified men. Chuck? Yes, I want to mention that 
Homer Elders, I've been here 28 years, and the Homer Elders has had a different background. They've not been by the same mold. Mm -hmm. elder that oversees the Lord's church brings a unique perspective an outlook on the decisions that have to be made and, and, I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up too because there are things that David has seen in his life there are things that Bobby has seen in his life and there are things that Kenny has seen in his life and when you put those together, it just makes for a better situation. For example, uh, Kenny, if I believe you served as an elder in, a, in Mississippi, in Mississippi. And so the, while he was an elder in Mississippi during that time, they might have had an issue that came up, just issue A. And maybe Bobby or David have never dealt with that issue. And hypothetically speaking that issue a arrives arises up in here Kenny's going to be able to draw on that experience on that background and bring something to the table for discussion that would that would better that it would better this congregation Jim Proverbs 11, 14 says this where there is no counsel people fall but in the multitude of counsel there is safety that's right that's right and so when we look about this whole idea, uh, I want to get back on our subject of tonight. We need to think about the fact that the elders have a responsibility to protect the body of Christ. And this is actually, that was supposed to be our review. But here we are on, on Acts chapter 15, verses 22 through 29. So if you have your Bibles, please turn there with me. Acts 15. Acts chapter 15, verses 22 through 29. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them. The apostle, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved uh, chosen men with, uh, to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than those necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual uh, immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well, farewell. And so what we find in verse 22 of this passage is that it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send the men or the chosen men on their own company, those that were among them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. And this shows that there is a cooperation amongst the eldership in the various congregations of the Lord's church. This further shows that one congregation can support another congregation. Those who were chosen were going with Paul and Barnabas, both whom were of the church at Antioch, missionaries. That's what they were. And 
one more section that we're going to look at, and we're going to put this all together, and then we'll move into our next part. Philippians 4, 10 through 20. Philippians 4, 10 through 20. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at your last care for me as flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I, am, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. For even in Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And in verse 15, this is key. No other members of the church gave but the Philippians. And this demonstrates that the eldership have authority to choose whether or not to give. When we think about the works that our elders choose that we're going to support, they have the right to select or not select what we're going to support. They, I'm sure, use sound judgment. They use some discussion. They look at a number of factors. What can we financially, as a congregation, support? We're blessed that over is it over 51 percent of our budget goes to support missions work. Over 51 percent goes to support mission work. Could they choose to back off from some of that? Could they? Absolutely they could. But as an eldership, they have determined that there is a need. They desire to do, make this choice that we're going to support with this amount of money. And we're going to look at that a little bit closer in just one second. Verse 18 tells us that Epaphroditus brought things to Paul from the church at Philippi. And again, remember what we're talking about. If you remember back to those slides last week about what is authorized and what is not authorized, we have to remember that Epaphroditus was sent to Philippi by Paul. You know, Paul describes him as his brother, his fellow worker and fellow soldier, but their messenger and the one who ministered to Paul's needs. Remember that chart where we look back at the brothers, the sisters? So if this is authorized, again, this is exactly what I was just talking about, the, what the non-institutional brethren authorize. If this is authorized, where church A gives to a member of church A and they directly send it to church B in Honduras, or giving to a missionary, John Doe, member of church A, he delivers to Jack uh, Smith, missionary in Honduras, directly. If giving to another congregation, specifically with no middleman, is authorized, or giving directly to a missionary is authorized, then if this is authorized, the elders at Corinth, choosing Paul, Titus, Barnabas, and the brother chosen by the churches, 
And these four individuals are all brothers, and they give the money to the elders or the brothers at Judea, then this too must be authorized. Elders at South Florida Avenue choosing to do mission work with Latin American missions who is who the work is overseen by the elders or brothers at Forest Park in Valdosta, Georgia, who then in turn give to Jesus Paguagua or the elders of the church there in Honduras if there are elders there. All right? You see, the elders here give that money to the elders at Forest Park and they receive our gift that is marked for a certain individual. Jesus Paguagua. When they get that money, they can't just pull the funds and say, we're going to give $100 to Jesus. And we're going to give $300 to this guy over here because he's just starting up. It doesn't work like that. They take what we give. They then forward that gift to Jesus. Those elders, again, do not have any control over what that money is used for. That is between Jesus Paguagua, the missionary that we support, and the elders of the congregation where he is working, if they're present. Because as we talked about, there may not be elders present. Uh, where's my mission folks? I just got back. Did y'all run into a lot of people that weren't married? A lot of people that weren't married. What's one of the qualifications of an elder? Husband of one wife. Oh, David, you snuck back in. Okay, I can't pick on David anymore. <laughs> Were you here the whole time? Oh, okay, okay. I just didn't see you right there. Uh, but no, the teaching the gospel means that they have to teach the whole gospel. And the elders have to be the husband of one wife. And if they run into the, the situation where they're not married, which when they were in Costa Rica, they clearly did, you know, that's, that makes it hard to establish elders in a church if you don't have that, meet that qualification. And, but the elders there at Forest Park simply keep an account of all the money collected but they cannot take it, they cannot divide it as they see fit because they have no authority for that. The only reason why they keep an account of that money is for planning purposes and for financial records. You see, they themselves are overseeing this work. They make the choice to, to oversee it and they pick up the difference. At least they should. Yes? It's hard for me to see how that, you know, why can't you be correct? Do they choose to be Okay. The elders at Forest Park are simply the middle men who are getting that money to Jesus, so forth. Okay, the elders there are overseeing a larger work. Okay, if you're familiar with the Latin American missions, okay, there's more than one missionary that's involved in this work. And when you start looking at the number of missionaries that are involved and the number of reports that are going out they do it for organizational purposes. Does that make sense? And you you could. Right. And 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 that's what the point that I was going to make. We we have the authority. We can give directly to him. If Jesus came here and you wanted to write a check for him, we could do it right there. If the elders want to say, hey, you know, we got some extra. We hear you're having some trouble or whatever. Your van's broke down. You need a new truck, whatever. Here's a check. Here it is right there. That's fine. I'm almost positive. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but that money is going to be reported back to Valdosta that you have, you know? You don't have to. Okay. All right. And again, it goes back to the fact, the I, the understanding that, uh, let me go back here, that the elders, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, uh, the whole church, uh, the elders chose the men. The elders have the right to choose who is delivering those funds? I have a, I have a comment for Bobby. Brandon McDonald sent me a report uh, on, and he takes in, when he takes in from individuals, he puts in a report. That's good. Yep. So they don't have to do that? He doesn't have to. No. There's, nope. Yep. Fred, did you want to add something? One of the big advantages of a sponsoring congregation over an individual congregation is the financial that that congregation has a responsibility to that individual. I've known of cases where somebody had a problem, maybe a health problem, it may have been any number of things. And those congregations had to go and, and give some immediate assistance. If you've got a lot of small congregations, they wouldn't be able to do that. They probably wouldn't be able to do that. Or you have a sponsoring congregation that can. They can come to the, it may, you know, it could be any number of things. Right. It has to be handled immediately. Uh, Bob, you mentioned, man, about a year or two ago, about the young lady in Africa who was burned and had to be flown out. Tanzania. Or no, Tanzania. That, is that Tanzania? And that same situation right there, if you take, if you take a congregation like the size of uh, Eagle Lake or Bartow, they may not be able to come up with a, a one next day flight or same day flight money. Whereas a larger congregation, like you're saying, can get that, have that resource. Yep. Yep. And so these are all reasons, you know, of, of the benefits of having this. And there's nothing that's unscriptural about it because as we've examined, what are these individuals to us? They're our brothers. And we have direct example of where we have elderships um, working together. There's the cooperation back in Acts 15, 22 through 29. They chose, they worked together. We support one another. We. Well, we're all, we, we've been baptized in, into the blood of Christ. We've been washed in the blood. As Christians, are we always going to agree on everything? Yeah, but they're calling us sinners. All right. Well, they're not calling us sinners. They're just saying we're not saved. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you, 
in, in the study that I've done in this, as I, as, because I'm about to throw you for a real loop in just a second. Um, when you start examining this closely and you understand where their argument lies, it'll begin to contradict itself. And I'm going to show you that in our next lesson. And so as they, as they make this argument on what can and can't be done, it all goes back to a similar situation with the woman at the well. What did Jesus tell her she worshipped? What she didn't know. And these folks, a good majority of them, are worshipping and doing things in a way that they just don't understand. They're just going with the flow. Because way back in the 50s and the 60s, some people got their feelings hurt and said, you can't do it this way. And somebody said, oh, yes, you can. And those that liked this guy went this route. And those that liked this guy went this route. So what makes it different than the denominations? <laughs> well, that's, that's where... That's where eventually, when we get down to through all of these studies, that's where we'll get to, is what does the Bible say? And that's why, and when I began this, I, I came to the elders with this, and they all agreed that this is definitely a study that needed to be addressed. Because how many of you have ever worked with or come in contact with a member of the non-institutional body. And how many of you didn't know what to say? What's our difference? And be able to explain it in a way that they understand. Because it's always been, he said, she said. They do it this way, we do it that way. But what, but what does the Bible say? But that's what in this next lesson, I'm going to throw you for a loop. And, and that's and that's because and when we start looking at it, when that when I started reading this and, and listening to the next issue that I'm going to bring up, I never thought of it this way. And it kind of I'm telling you, it made me second guess myself. But I went back to the scriptures. Well, the conversation I had, yep. well we're going to get there. <laughs> you know, and that's yeah, that was the first that 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 that's that was our very first lesson, if you remember, on this study. It does not matter what I say; it matters what the Bible says. Okay, yes, Nikki. We're not around in the Bible. That's right. You know, it's it's not a clear. It doesn't say, well, you know, you you're not allowed to have a fellowship or something like that. But yep. I think you also have to think: is the money being used wisely? I mean, for me to say, I mean, this combination, they wouldn't even buy use their money to buy cleaning materials for the building. We're, people have to purchase it individually. We're going. We're going to get there. Eventually, we'll get there.